now I get to introduce some dear, dear friends of ours. They are awesome powerhouse couple. Um, I cannot even, if I were to go on all day, I couldn't tell you all of the things that I appreciate about, about them. But uh, they are pastors and missionaries. They were, they're actually currently Foursquare emissaries, all right? But uh, Pastor Becky is, was my coach and is my coach because pastors need to have a coach too right you got to keep growing right no matter how far you go all right and she is awesome but she is also a coach to so she's a coach for the women in ministry leadership cohort but she is also a coach for the worship cohort so if you're on the worship team go talk to pastor becky <laughs> Amen. And then Pastor Richard, he is an anointed man of God. He just has a special anointing on his life to speak about the Holy Spirit and to help people um, understand how to hear from God and how to use his gifts. They are a powerful, powerful couple. These, these guys are awesome. So I just encourage you to open up your hearts, to be receptive, because I believe that the Lord wants to do something today. Amen. God wants to meet people today. This the title of his message is the, the shepherd communicates with his sheep. And we are his sheep, right? So God wants to communicate with you. So I just encourage you to engage. Don't be afraid. I, I trust these people with my life. All right? Amen. Well, Pastor Richard, if you'll come. All right. Wow. How's everyone doing? Great. Uh, we are really happy to be here. And uh, my wife, Becky, wave. Uh, yeah. And uh, we have, the, have had, as was already stated, we've had the privilege of meeting and interacting with your leaders here. And uh, both Matt, Pastor Martin and Alexandra, just awesome. We're really excited about what God is doing with you. Uh, they brag a lot about you, and they're talking about this congregation and what God is doing. Uh, para los que hablan en español, saludos, que, y que, Dios, que Dios los bendiga, y voy a hablar en inglés, parece que le van a traducir, pero quería que supieran que Dios comunica en español también. <laughs> a todos los, sus ovejas que hablan en español amén. Se dice por allá que el español es la idioma del cielo No sé <laughs> Pero Eso se dice Awesome uh, For those of you who don't speak English Too bad uh, uh, English I mean Don't speak Okay yeah, I, I know that <laughs> I was saludándolos I was saying hi to my peeps So awesome uh, okay, um, I want to talk to you, as it has been said, about how to learn, that we can learn how God, the way God communicates to us. Uh, John chapter 1, the, the writer of the gospel, John, introduces the whole gospel of John by saying this, and this is from chapter 1, verse 10, uh, that underscoring the fact that, here's a, a takeaway, God created you for relationship with Him. Amen. You, if you want to say, what's the, my greatest purpose in life? Your greatest purpose in life is to have a relationship with God. Amen. He wants you enough that He created you, and then He wants you enough that He sent His Son to die in your place on the cross, Amen. to satisfy that issue that, that Pastor Martin was talking about the, the sin problem. <laughs> Jesus solved the sin problem by taking all the judgment and all the penalty that your sin or I deserved, and it does deserve it in front of a holy God. So God, so that He could be both holy, which is perfect in all of His ways, and merciful, found a solution to the punishment for our sin. And He sent Jesus. And Jesus died on the cross and there he took all our sin, and he took all the penalty of our sin on him so that we could have a relationship with him. Isn't that amazing? 
That is, by the way, that's the heartbeat of the gospel. When someone says, I believe in Jesus, we don't just believe that Jesus is a guy, that he was here, that he was a great teacher. We don't even just believe that he was healed or that he did all those miracles. What we really, what makes our faith, what saves us, what brings this gift of God into our life is when we believe what he did for us on the cross. See, that's the catch. So yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian because I, I believe in Jesus. I believe that Jesus was real, that he was for real, he came, that he was God on earth. But I tell you, I'm a Christian, in fact, because I believe that he died on the cross for me. That's just a little doctrine, doctrine 101, okay? But so that you could, I don't want you to not understand what makes you a Christian. See, what makes you a Christian is that you have put your faith in his sacrifice for you. Amen? Amen. How many here have done that already? Okay, well, if you haven't, today's a great day for that. And so, because it's any day is a great day to get your life in, aligned with, with Jesus and to trust in what he did for you. And uh, anyway, so that's just kind of a for free opener here. Uh, so now in, in John chapter 1, he says, he came into the world, he's talking about Jesus, but the world didn't recognize him. See, that's the effect of sin. They were filled with sin. They didn't, under, they didn't see who he was. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to be children of God. And children of God, how, how much more of a relationship language do you have than father-child? Father-child, that's a relationship. And he says, they're, they are reborn. You've heard that ever? Have you heard that phrase, born again? You got to be born again. Jesus is the one who coined that phrase, by the way. He says, you must be born again. That's the miracle that happens when you put your faith in Jesus' work for you. Okay. And so, because of that, you become a child of God. And in that relationship, you are promised that you will have a relationship with God. I, just on a side note, I find this to be one of the distinguishing characteristics of Christianity as opposed to every other religion. And that in Christianity, it, it is built on this premise that you can have a relationship with God. And not just a distant, fearful, trembling, oh, I, I've got to do whatever sacrifices He wants. I have to try to please God. But you can have a relationship with God because He loves you. Isn't that awesome? That's why it's, it's good to be a Christian, because it, it, the whole concept of it is based on a loving God who wants a relationship with me. Amen. I'm getting excited. John 3, 16 then follows John chapter 1, probably. For this is how God loved the world. How did He love us? He gave His one and only Son, so that anyone who believes in Him and what He did for us will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent His Son into the world, not to judge the world. How many are glad about that? I love that phrase, God is not mad at you. I saw that driving up, and I said, oh, awesome. <laughs> Boy, am I glad of that every day. In fact, God loves us, and He's always trying to, to kind of, He's always trying to get, take care of the stuff that puts you at odds with Him. I love it. So, <clears throat> if we start there, God loves you. He died for your sins so that you could have a relationship with Him. So, now we've got to talk about the relationship. And the relationship is based on communicating. And so, I think it is so important that every believer know how God communicates to them. Because Becky and I have a relationship. In fact, we've been having a married relationship for 50 years. 50 and a half. I, I found her, and I did not let her go. <laughs> and she's loved me anyway, so <laughs> it's awesome. But see, we have a relationship. And I, what I'm reminded of periodically by her is that our relationship grows in, in relationship to how much we communicate with each other. Amen. Right, guys? <laughs> That's your takeaway, guys, today. 
You got to communicate. You got to talk. You got to share your heart. Oh my, you got to share your feelings. All that comes through communication. More than grunts, you know, more than, er, you know, it's got to be, I got to talk. I got to have a relationship. Well, where did we get that idea from? We get it from God. And so God created the woman so that she would reflect that about him. And that he would constantly help us understand we've got to communicate. So if communication is central, you're following where I'm going with this. So if, if we do, in fact, have a relationship, which we do, we have a relationship with God. He loves you and wants a relationship with you. So he wants to communicate to you. And you need to know how he communicates. And the communicating with God is not only you talking to him. And we, we hear a lot about, let's pray, let's pray. And boy, it is important that we pray. But we also have to learn how to distinguish, perceive what he communicates to us. So that's what we're talking about. John 10, verse 14. I'm the good shepherd. Jesus is talking about himself, that's not me. Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me, and I know the father, so I sacrifice my life for the sheep. Boy, there's relationship talk right there. <laughs> I know you, so here's the shepherd. I'm right now the shepherd. The shepherd knows you. The shepherd wants you to know him. Well, how much does he want me to know him? The father knows me. That's how I want you to know me. Wow. Wow. That's pretty intimate. <laughs> That's pretty intense. God wants to know me. The shepherd wants to know me just like the father knows him. Whew. So now he goes on in verse 3, or earlier than that, he talks about the gatekeeper, the guy that this is from a sheep. Uh, the sheep would be put in this big pen, and the, and the shepherd, the gatekeeper shepherd, would be at the gate of that. He would not let the wolves in, but he wouldn't let the sheep out unless he wanted them to go out. And so here's the language of that. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, the, sh the shepherd, and the sheep recognize his voice, and they come to him. He calls out his sheep, get ready, by name. This is John 10, 3 through 5. By name. He calls his own sheep by name. I love that. Richard, Richard, that's my name, by the way, Richard, Richard, he knows my name, and he calls me by name, and he leads them out. As he gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. Oh, wait a minute, you're already getting nervous. Like, well, how will I know if it's God or not? That comes up later. But I want to tell you right up front, he, you won't recognize the stranger's voice, which actually means you'll recognize that's a stranger voice. That's not my shepherd. That's not my shepherd. You know? Uh, it, okay, I'll move on. I haven't got a great picture, but I'm going to move on. In fact, is, listen to this. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. So here's the whole premise of what I want to, what we're going to do today. We're going to have a workshop. Everybody say workshop. workshop. Everybody say, I'm really excited about this workshop. I'm really excited about the workshop. I love it. Come on. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, now I want to talk specifically about what I think is the key to your relationship with Jesus, is that you recognize how he communicates to you. So we're going to practice that. Now, some in the room, boy, you, you're like a, you know, you're a constant communication with God, and you talk about that. And in fact, let's talk first about, let's get some language cleared up. 
All through the scripture, even here, he talks about voice. He hears, he listens, I hear his voice, I hear his voice. God spoke to me. Uh, there might have already today, someone may have said, you know, the Lord, in fact, who was it, Zach up here, who talked about how he was thinking about this morning, and so he was talking to God. And then he didn't go on and say it necessarily, but he could have said in normal church language, and then God showed me this. God spoke this to me. Well, what I have found is that that language, God speaks to me, can be confusing. Because that he speaks to me kind of lends me to believe that there's a voice. That I'm going to hear a voice. So some people say, well, God never talks to me. I go, what? God talks to everybody. He's always, he's a talker. The Holy Spirit has been sent by Jesus to communicate with us, and He does it all the time. The problem is that we don't know how to recognize it. And part of it starts, I think, with, with the, I'm not going to say, I don't want to sound like anti-Bible, but what I'm just saying is that we got to understand the practicality of what it means when it says, and God spoke to him. God said this to him. By and large, and I've now been doing an informal survey for years, very few people hear voices. And in fact, if you hear too many voices, <laughs> crazy, isn't it? And so, <clears throat> very few, in fact, and I'm telling you, I've done like these kind of workshops a lot, and I ask people, well, how did he communicate? How did he com That's why I use the word, he communicates with me. It's, it's common day language, it's Castile language for he, spoke, he speaks to me. How does he communicate? The fact that he does communicate and that he wants somehow to make himself known to you. He wants his will known to you. He wants his feelings about you known to you. He wants you to know how he feels about you, what he thinks about you, what he wants for you. He wants to talk to you about your problem. He wants to give you advice. <laughs> he wants to give you wisdom. He wants to tell you no when you're about to do something stupid. Come on. And, and, and thank God for the Holy Spirit that is communicating to us. In fact, when we start, when we start going through this, you're going to start realizing, yeah, I, yeah that, I, I get that. Yeah, I've had that. I've seen that. And so, how does God communicate? Well, I come to the conclusion that he communicates through my senses. Okay? I'm the receiver. So he speaks to me in my language. Si yo hablo ustedes que solamente hablan inglés, en español no me entienden. Listen, que hablan español digan amén. What we just said is if I speak to you in English and you don't understand Spanish, I don't communicate anything to you. So God knows that already. So he's going to communicate to you the way you are with your senses, what you pay attention to, for example, right? What, do you, what senses do you even pay attention to? I kind of think that he has to finally sometimes just talk to us out loud because we don't have any other senses. You know what I'm saying? It might be for the more stubborn people that have... Don't do that. <laughs> what? And I've had a couple of those moments. I have had where, it's, I mean, I don't, it's, it was so clear in my head, it might as well have been a loud voice. Amen. So that is kind of how God talks to you sometimes. And has anybody had that? Okay, we got, okay, so we got some stubborn people here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's, let's talk about some of the senses God uses. I move a lot in, in, in what they call a prophetic ministry is when the shepherd talks to his sheep through his sheep. That's prophecy. And so that's, that's essentially when you, and we're going to get to that workshop as well. We've got both halves of this. 
So get ready. But so let's talk about this. Uh, imagery is one of the ways God communicates. You, you see images. For example, if I see a picture of a shepherd holding a little sheep, what does that communicate? If you see that picture, what does it communicate to you? God cares. He's there. Love. Okay, so he just said he loves you. God just spoke to you. God, you love me. Oh, God, I wish you'd tell me you love me. And you're seeing this picture the whole time. He's, <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh, he loves me. Okay. So, emotions. Sometimes you feel something. and You'll see this, especially a lot of times when you're like praying for someone. You're praying with your friend and you just get this emotion. Kind of like overwhelming. I'm just going to pick on love because it's so odd. Just, oh, man, wow. I, I love this person. And you're going to, well, you love them, yes. But what's happening is the Holy Spirit's communicating to you how much they love him. So emotions. Physical impressions. That's, you know, you just kind of, I don't know, you know, get the chills. I don't, I don't know. But it is, there's time sometimes where you just, so you feel something physically, like almost that clearly, like, whoa. I, here's one. I, I just call it intuition. It's when God communicates something into your brain, and you just know it. I sometimes call this knowing. <laughs> I don't know how I know, but I just know that. You know, I just, I was, I was thinking about whether God loves me. And, oh, God, yeah. Yes. I, yeah. We, sometimes, sometimes the knowing is, is such a surprise, we call it a revelation. Wow, he just revealed. You'll hear, you'll hear Christians talk like that. Oh, he just revealed to me that he loves me. Hey, we call that knowing which is awesome. You now know something by the power of the Holy Spirit influencing you to know that. That's Him communicating. Let's talk about Scripture. Scripture. A lot of people will, will get a Scripture verse. They're praying about something, they're talking to someone, and a Scripture verse comes to their mind. Amen. To do that, you usually have to read the Scripture a lot. That helps, <laughs> Right? Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, and so that's powerful. You know, we were on a team praying for people and ministering prophetically over them, and one of them, I just blew it. Every time we, every person we'd speak to, he would have a scripture for him. Wow, that's awesome. I was a little jealous almost. It's like, <laughs> I wish I should read scripture more. So there is that. We already touched on this one. There is that time where there's like a voice. It's so clear. It's like you hear it in your head, almost like you could hear it outside. Another one is just the impression. In fact, <clears throat> this is common enough that when you hear, where you hear this, this language I'm talking about, this communication expressed is a lot of times when you're listening, when people are praying for one another. And I just, you'll hear, I just feel like, I just sense. Have you heard those? I sense. That's communication talk. I can't quite explain how I'm getting this, <laughs> but I get the impression. God's impressing upon my heart that He cares for you, that He loves you. Have I missed any? Any, any other way? Okay. Of course, the... Th Last person, last one. Oh, dreams. It says, your old man shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. There is that. A vision is that imagery. You see a picture. You, you see some kind of imagery that represents what God wants to communicate to you. And in dreams, dreams, God just, and, and in dreams, God uses imagery, uses words, uses scripture. It's all mixed up like that. And so, that's pretty neat. I don't have a lot of that. But I know people who do. And so, so here's the catch. So <clears throat> if I'm going to 
believe that God communicates to me, then my next step is I have to become sensitive to my senses and how God is, would communicate with me. And some has to do with how you're wired. Some of you wouldn't know an emotion if it hit you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just you're not wired emotionally. So the idea that God always just makes me feel so, and you go, oh, no, I'll never get that. But some people are wired just the difference. They, they're not like knowing things, people. You know, it's not a, a thought. How cold is that? You know, I want feeling, emotion. So God in his wonderful wisdom communicates to you in the way that you would most likely <laughs> be sensitive to or open to. But you begin to realize that when you become, you begin, now, now, please don't understand, we're not some like internal like, whoa, you know, we're going to, no, we're just being ourselves and the Holy Spirit is just reaching out to us saying, I want to show you this, I want to tell you this, I want you to know that. So, is that clear? Yes. You guys are sure? Yes. Okay, all right. Then, let's do this. We're going to have our first workshop. What does this mean when I say workshop? We're going to practice this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to just take a, a, a minute or so. It doesn't take long for the Holy... He's already communicating. In fact, as I'm speaking, and as I have been speaking, God's already begun to communicate stuff to you. Like he's told you, don't be afraid. <laughs> Anybody felt that? Like, I just got to, don't be afraid. This is not going to be scary. You're going to do it. Um, and there's no pass or fail here. And we're not going to grade you. Uh, but we're going to ask you, if you're willing, to kind of share. Because we're going to learn from one another. And our objective about this is twofold. One is for you to recognize how God communicates to you. But also for others to recognize how God communicates to other people. Because what happens is it begins to, oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, me, that's, that's how he does me. And it reinforces, it helps you. You leave, you leave the room kind of like, wow, yeah, this is for real. I can trust it. Because here's what, here's what it takes for God to communicate you. You have to perceive it, then you have to receive it. What I mean, you know what I'm saying? Is I get this thought, and I have to filter that. Is that from God? Well, that's a huge step. Is that from God? And I, so here's what I would suggest, is let's just believe that during this time, it's a Holy Spirit time. It's a no devil zone. <laughs> Amen? Amen? We're just not going to let him <laughs> confuse us. And that this is a safe time. And so we're going to assume that the Holy Spirit is just vibrantly waiting to communicate stuff to you and that you're going to perceive it. And so you begin to be sensitive. Am I, what am I seeing? What am I feeling? What am I hearing? What am I, wow. And then you're going to have to receive that by faith. You know what that means, right? It's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to validate that. That may be another way when we say receive it, validate it. Are you going to accept that it could be from God? And once you, by faith, make that decision, is this from God? Is God communicating to me this? Was that picture of the lamb and, and the shepherd a picture he wanted me to hear and see? And then what does that mean to me? What, what, what's the interpretation of that? What's it saying? What is he communicating to me with that? That's, a, that's just that's a, a, a really quick process. It's not complicated. Once you start just, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I recognize that. I recognize that. And what happens as you practice that and practice that and practice that, it becomes just more almost not routine in a bad way, but it becomes so clear because you recognize that. Right? You recognize it. Now, <clears throat> you know, when, when you've been around someone for a long time, you know their voice. Oh, I know who that is. I know who that is. 
That's Becky laughing. I know her laugh. <laughs> you know? It, oh, speaking of laugh, anybody know that laugh? <laughs> We recognize, see? And so, but that's because you've been around them and you've, you've learned to hear and learned to, so, okay. <clears throat> so, let's, what we're going to do, I want you to just take a, a quiet moment to wait on the Lord. That's what we call it, waiting on God, preparing ourselves, not because He doesn't want to communicate, but we're really preparing ourselves to perceive it, acknowledge it, and then we're going to confess it. That's the other part of this, okay? Are you ready? So, Father, we just thank you for the Holy Spirit's gift and that you are here to communicate to us your heart to us individually. What is God, what do you want us to know about you or about us? What is it you want us to know? Just communicate something now to me about who you are or what who I am to you talk to me communicate with me yes i just pay attention just let him communicate Okay. Are you ready? How many got something communicated to you? And how many are afraid to say? No, no we're not going to say that. Okay. Okay, so that's awesome. I, I, I Again, God was communicating to everybody. We just, do we have the, we're going to practice. That's why we're practicing. So now what I'd like is for someone to tell us what he communicated to you. He told me what about five words. Okay. He said that he loves me, he protects me. He said I'm good, but I don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, how did you get that? How it was in my head. It was like a knowing Okay, yeah. But he talks to me a lot. Okay, super. We talk a lot. There you go. That's a conversation. That's great. Someone else. He told me that there are many aging sons in this world. Okay. And that he is the answer. And just that there are barriers out there. Okay. Awesome. You jumped to the second part of the, pro the <laughs> workshop, but that's great. He told me that uh, he's been faithful ever. Forever. And that no matter what happens, no matter what happens, that he's not going to change. Awesome. And I, should, I, should have to be, I have to be bold about what I do. That's and what awesome. Great. And how did he communicate that to you? How did you know that? It's in my, in my heart. In your heart, like kind of just feelings? And feelings and I had him just telling me that. Oh, that's awesome. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, okay. Um, I felt like God was telling me that, one, that he loved me, but he wasn't abandoning me. He hasn't left me. He hasn't forsaken me. Um, he told me not to be discouraged. Um, kind of brought me to like John 15 where it says like I am the vine you are the branches remain 
Man. Awesome. He talked to you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. How did you perceive all that? How did it come to you? I more just kind of, it's not like I hear anything, but I do feel it and kind of know it. Awesome. Feel and know. Anybody else feel and know? Okay. Anybody else just kind of hear voices? A little like a voice? You, yeah. Can, can you share what, are you willing to share? Okay. That is awesome. That's awesome. Anybody feel? Anyone get something like through feeling? And then it sounds like there was feeling and then kind of that, re, re, almost like she thought she was saying it to herself. And that's, you know, what you explained is that process where you, you by faith, you validated. At some point you had to say, no, that's not just me. That's, that's, that's the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is so cool. Uh, share your feeling or what God. Wow. Oh, man, that's, that's rich. So let me see if I got it. You felt, you got feelings. You first felt a negative, a heaviness, which was kind of him letting you know about you. And then he, you felt his love and his one. Yeah, it's so powerful. So we have God speaking through kind of a voice that we, we hear almost clearly. We've got feelings, feelings, scriptures. What else has been identified here? Knowing. Knowing. Who else wants to just share? Okay. And There's a new one. Put that one in there. Okay, now let's break this one down. This is really cool. Imagery, but memory. Memory of something that had happened. Now he brings that forward to right now, and you suddenly begin to understand. Maybe that's another one we ought to put under there. I understand. It, it's, it's the translation, isn't it? Somehow, you, you, no one tells you that's what it means, but you, the Spirit translates it. Hey, you, cat lost, you lost, I care about you. <laughs> That's amazing. Anybody else have that kind of thing where you kind of remembered something that the Holy Spirit? You want? Are you? You mind sharing it? Okay. Uh huh. And it wasn't a memory, so it might be a little confusing. Yeah, yeah. But it was three things. The first one was my head on the pillow. So it was the next one was that, and then the second one was me praying in the next thing. But I'm by myself. And then the last one was, uh, it was an image of this bowl and me making stuff. And so I'm guessing I'm still the writer. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> Three images. Yeah. That is pretty cool. And again, see, the Holy Spirit generally, I'm going to say generally because no one tells the Holy Spirit what to do, right? But <laughs> I'm going to just say generally, the Holy Spirit interprets himself. He applies it. That's why later on in the next session, we're going to practice hearing not just for us, but now hearing for someone else. For I just want to ask, I love how it's so personal. How you said this is how God talks to you. God does that to you, you know, over and over again, telling, I'm, I'm telling him about something, he says, but you never laugh at that story. <laughs> Yeah. And uses the words. Our 
Translator, are you hearing? Are you able to hear what's being said around by the people? Okay, maybe I'll repeat what they say. Okay, yeah. Uh, in español, ¿quién oyó o sintió algo que quiera compartir? Okay. No, que como él me dice que, no ahora, pero todos los días que, que salga de las calles y que no tema porque, aunque ande en Valle de Sombras, que no tema porque, porque él está conmigo. That God said, when you're out on the street, go out every day, go out to the streets, que salga todos los días a la calle. No, que, sal, que, salga, que salga de las calles porque como que, como que en las calles hay, hay cosas hay Ah, cosas que, malas, como que no, no vayas por esos caminos. So it basically, get get out, get off the street, get off the street that's going to bad places, because he's with me the whole time. ¿Y, y cómo lo, lo percibiste? Lo que pasa es que, que uno lo percibe cuando uno, cuando uno está, ¿me entiende? En, en el lugar, ¿me entiende? Como que, a ver, como que todos los jóvenes, eh, cuando salimos, eh, siempre tú sales y tienes como que... Dos caminos, ¿sabes? Sí. Pero lo viste, ¿cómo lo percibiste? ¿Cómo lo percibo? Porque, porque lo viste como una visión, o lo sentiste, no, lo oíste. El problema es que yo siempre ando con Dios, ¿sabes? Te digo, yo ando siempre en caminos que, ah. que no tengo que andar. Sí. Ay, y okay. entonces, es como que él te, te recordó. Sí, de no, y que, que siempre él como que, como que trata de sacarme de lo malo. ¿me sí, qué bien, muy bien. Gracias. ¿Ese suena cubano? Sí, sí. <risa> qué bien. Yo viví en Cuba de niñito hace un chorro de años atrás, pero yes. Yeah, okay. Oh, the, I think they want you so he can translate okay. if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, well, for me, I didn't know. I knew, kind of thought I was God, but then I didn't. And then I was like, because what if God is telling this to everybody? So then I was like praying. I was like, God, I don't know if you're telling me this, but basically I just heard him say, like, be still and know that I'm God. And then I was like, I kept hearing that. And then I was like, okay, like. Am I supposed to hear something else? And I was like, God, please. Pr and like, I kept trying to pray to him to tell him to talk to me more. And he kept saying that. <laughs> so I'm like, I think he's trying to tell me something. Cause I'm usually <laughs> going around doing a bunch of things. I have a lot of energy and um, try to stay busy as much as possible. And so I think he kept telling me that. And at first I was like, what if he's telling this to everybody? And then I heard everybody say like different verses that they were hearing. And I was like, okay, that was God. So I'm like, okay, gotcha. I'll do that more. <laughs> awesome. And how did you, was, you heard it like a voice, yeah. like, like he was conversing to you up here, in here? That's super. This is great. You guys, like, can I just make an observation? And that is that there's a high openness and awareness of the Holy Spirit in this group. And God has a real call on y'all for, because it's so important to be able to identify how God communicates. So, again, that argument you were having, that's, that's perfect. You did the right thing. It, no, I'm not saying just every, any idea that comes in your head, oh, that's God. No, judge it. Use your discernment. And, and, and as with practice, the first time you'll, oh, yeah, that's him. And, but it's not ever wrong to, to question it. But there's also a point where you're just not wanting to believe. <laughs> and you were kind of on that edge where you're like, oh, I can't be saying that to me. Can't be, that can't be him. But awesome. But... But you, you, you went through it. See, you kept going through it. Because, I mean, don't we all want God to communicate to us? Come on. Don't we all want to hear that? Now, what happens to someone who is not like, quote, a Christian? Does God communicate to them? How many say yes? You're right. According to me, at least. <laughs> because otherwise, how could he call you to himself? How could he draw you to himself? In fact, some of those, and so a lot of times an unbeliever will, will feel what we call the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Conviction is when he makes us aware of our need and our separation from God. That's communicating. This hunger, I want God. I, I, I just, and, and you have these God, I call them the God thoughts that are not in your normal thinking. Like, I better go find some Christians. 
that's not normal. <laughs> if you don't believe in God and he's telling you, go to that church. Like, did God communicate? Yes, he did. So, hallelujah, that God communicates to all of His sheep, the found ones and the lost ones, which is good. How many have ever been a lost sheep? <laughs> I mean, how many had to have a grandma pray you back in, is what I'm talking about. You know, it's like you were out there, and you knew how to, like your testimony, he just flat out, you were out there being you, and God said, stop. And gave you a warning and gave you a call. And he, in fact, we didn't mention this, but here's the way God communicates to me. Music. Do you ever have that annoying worship song go on in your head when you're thinking bad things? (laughs) Come on. Maybe that's us church people, but, oh, that is so when you're trying to, like, be whatever and... I exalt you. Oh, please. (laughs) Completely ruins the sin mode. You know? (laughs) Come on. That's God communicating. So are you convinced? That God communicates. So if you, quote, if you're still in the room and you say, ah, God didn't communicate anything to me, practice. Because it could be just the fear that you might have to share is blocking it. <laughs> and no one has to share if you don't want to. But I want you to, to understand that he cares. So what will this do, for example, to your prayer life? When you're just talking to God, it could turn it into a conversation. That's because now you're not just pouring out your heart. But now he begins to communicate. In fact, the psalm, David and the psalm writers, you can, you can, I see this kind of pattern. They're pouring out their heart. Oh, God, my enemies are chasing me. Where are you? I don't know where you are. And then towards the end of the song, he says, but you're my faithful God. You are my shield, my fortress. Where do you get that from? I believe in the middle of his lamenting, the Holy Spirit, in, here's another word I didn't use, inspire. Inspire. Amen? He inspires us. Come on. All you artistic types. How much inspiration does the Holy Spirit use to touch you and to write you? Some of you have, the Holy Spirit's painted you while you doodled. You find yourself doodling and suddenly you start writing. You start painting. You start doing things. See, in other words, what we're finding out is that God's communication is rich, is rich. Okay, so one more workshop, one more practice session. You ready? We did the first one. The shepherd speaks to his sheep, to you. Now we're going to practice where our sister went ahead. (laughs) We're going to practice part two. The Holy Spirit, the shepherd, will communicate to his sheep to another sheep. So that means now we're going to just wait on the Holy Spirit to communicate something to you about how God feels and what God would like to express to someone else in the room. Are you ready for that? It's just as easy as the first one. In fact, let's do this a little differently because I'm going to shake you up. Are you ready to be shaken up? I'm just going to have you stand for this one. And I want you, as you're waiting on the Lord, to look around, to kind of just look around and just, as you're praying, just pray. Father, we just, now we're just praying now. So, Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit that you not only communicate how you think and feel about us, but now you want to communicate to us about how you feel and think and how you look, see, one of my brothers and sisters. So shepherds, communicate to us. Communicate us to us through someone else. And help me communicate for you to someone else. In Jesus' name. Now let's just wait a, a bit. Pick it up, perceive it. 
Don't be afraid. Because you want to communicate, not only to us directly, but you want to communicate by the reinforcing confirmation of someone else who knows me. So open up our heart, Lord, to receive boldly. Yes, Lord. Okay. First, let me do this. How many understand that this is a practice session? Raise your hand if you understand this is a practice session. Come on, I want to see every hand. If you understand that. Two, how many will allow someone to practice on you? Come on. So that means if someone comes to you, you're not going to be judgy. You're not going to be harsh. You're just going to let them share. And should they be wrong, which, by the way, I've never seen this happen because the Holy Spirit's that faithful. But So I want you now to just as you've, waited and sensed what God, that you would go and very briefly share with that person that God put on your heart what you sense for them, okay? <laughs> go for it. Save it for them. Share it with them because that, that, that is how God works too. He'll show you something for someone who's not here. But he may also show you for something, another word for someone who's here. <laughs> See. Ah, que bueno, que bueno, gracias. See. Yo, um, Hablo español porque primero viví en Cuba cuando era muy chico, uh, pero después viví en México por varios años. Y ahí de joven, así que aprendí, eh, se me olvidó lo cubano y aprendí lo mexicano. Sí. Por eso hablo como mexicano. Sí, pues. Ya <laughs> 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 I, I don't know about if you have some, share it. And I just want to, I, I do have just encouragement for them. And I think you do too. I think this is all, we don't need to do more. They, cu they got it. I'll just give a couple of exhortations at the end. I'll do the same Feed, break, yeah, feedback because I am going two hours. <laughs> okay. Uh, as soon as you're done sharing, let's, I just want to pull back together. We want to uh, do a debrief. Okay, all right, as you wrap up, uh, let's, let's debrief a little bit. Okay, who, had, who got something shared with you that was meaningful? I guess for the translation, you don't mind again. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I was, she just shared with me that uh, God wants me to trust him and that basically that God has been faithful to her and that um, he's going to be faithful to me and that he knows everything that's going on in my life and that he's going to make it work out. Awesome. Did that, did you, was that good? Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me ask you, how did you, how did that, oh, how did that come to you?
he's had some anxiety. Okay. The Lord is saying, don't be anxious okay. for anything. And the Lord reminded me of when I have passed through difficulties. Okay. He's been very faithful to me as I kept holding on. That's Without anyone else. And then the Lord <laughs> reassured him, reassure her that he is here for her. Awesome. He will not leave her. And that he will take care of all that okay. is troubling her. Okay, so... What, what we had, you saw her, mm -hmm. and when you saw her, there's like this discernment. Yes. That's what we call it, an, a, a knowing about where your heart was. Is that true? A little, the anxiety a little bit? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily anxiety. I just say maybe there's a lot of stress. <laughs> okay, that's, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Got to figure it out. Okay, someone else that got received something. It was a lot of coming on over here. Can you share it? <laughs> Do you can you? Yeah, sure, why not? Hold it. This Did I turn it off? Oh yeah, I probably did. Oh, yeah, there it goes. What she said to me had yeah. um, crossed my mind. Yeah. What she said. Like okay. It was just came as affirmation. This is super. So you were thinking it. She comes and she says it. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Uh, we won't ask what she said then. <laughs> but but what? Did, how did you get that? A feeling of protection uh, over her brothers that God's watching them. Oh, wow. Wherever they are, he, he's watching them and protecting them and has army angels surrounding them. Oh, wow, that's, and you saw that kind of as just a picture, or? I like just feeling. Feeling, okay, super, yeah, that's, that's right, you're the feeling girl, that's right, yeah. Who else? Someone else that got something, and then we'll ask the, the giver what they thought. Um, uh, this is, like, uh, surprising to me, like, um, even though, like, I, I prayed for, and I just got, like, a scripture from Joshua 1, 9 which I, I just wanted to read. Oh, yeah, sure. Go for it. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. So once I prayed, once I prayed, like, I got that scripture in my head, and then all of a sudden, uh, Josh reminded me of that scripture. <laughs> that was, like, out of nowhere. Oh, wow. That was, like, God is, like, speaking to me. It's like, <laughs> that was, like, so... Unexpected and so. That's amazing. Way. And <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to share that. <laughs> I guess that's awesome. So Josh, mm -hmm. I guess the scripture. Yeah, that, uh, I got that scripture. I got a little bit more than that, but that was the main thing that came to mind. Yeah, that's awesome. Isn't this great? So how many got spoken to? Something got shared to you. Oh, Amen. And how many got to share? Wasn't it fun? Uh, see, what, I don't, what, here, I'll let this here. What I just want to leave you with, now we can do this over and over and over, but I don't think we need to because you just have caught on so quickly. And I, obviously, I'm in a, a, a group of people that are very ministry-minded, and you have your, your whole pulse of this church is to have people who don't know Christ come to Christ. And that means that you're a band of missionaries. And I know your pastor has commissioned you all as pastors, so I'm at a pastor's conference. <laughs> and commissioning you to do the work of ministry. And so you are now equipped with the uh, realization that God does communicate all the time. And he will communicate to you if you're perceptive. Got to pay attention. What is the Holy Spirit communicating? And then receive it. Discern it. Make that, own it. <laughs> validate it. But act on it in faith. You heard that over and over. I'm sure those of you who shared were going like, is this for real? Do I really, is this matter? Is this important? And you go, and then you hear like, oh, it just so happens 
to validate exactly what I was thinking. Because remember, the Scripture says prophecy, which is this is what this is. Prophecy is just simply the shepherd communicating to his sheep through his sheep. That's all it is. And he communicated today to his sheep directly, but also we tasted, and you do this anyways. This is very common. And I imagine, I'm thinking, I can pretty well say, that it happens when you pray for each other around here. You're praying. And then as you pray, the Holy Spirit begins to inspire and give you thoughts and ideas and compassion and emotions. Amen? Amen. Because prayer is such a powerful time. Now, think of this as a, also as a sharing tool. Now, you don't walk up to someone that you don't know and say, I'm, I want to pray for you and give you a word from God. You just listen to them and your heart. And as you're talking, you may get affirming things. You know what I, I sense about you is, oh, I, did I say sense? That's a Holy Spirit communication. But we don't tell them that. I sense that, that, you're a, that you're a real, uh, that you're a perseverer. How did you know that? See, but in fact, the Scripture says that when we prophesy, when we speak for the shepherd by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, people will say, God is in your midst. Why? Because the secrets of their hearts were revealed. See, the secret of your heart, concerned about your brothers, got revealed. But it didn't shame, it encouraged. And oh, wow. And it made you say, wow, God really cares. So I just want, I want to, I, I, that's my gift to you. <laughs> not, it's not my gift to give. It's the Holy Spirit's gift to give. But to, I, uh, that's what I wish for all of you, that you will in, these, in this next week, today even, you will practice this. And you'll practice it and you'll begin to be so fluid in it, so fluent in it, that it'll just be like just a part of your life. And, and, and think how important. And may I also say, don't discount the fact that you know someone, that you're getting something for them. Because often the people who know us the best can encourage us the most if they would just not be afraid. Well, I know them. I know, I know that about them. Yeah, but there's something different when you say, the Holy Spirit wants me to say, say this to you. I know this about you, but I feel like the Lord wants you to know this. And you just share that. And so I can go on and on, but I just want to leave you with this. It is a Holy Spirit experience. You are partnering with the Holy Spirit. It's being led by the Spirit. All that, that language that you, you just experienced, that you were led, you partnered, God used you, you ministered, you shared, you even prophesied. That's awesome. But what's fun is that it's so down to earth. Right? It's doable. You did it. The Holy Spirit did it. And so I just want to encourage you with that because my word that I feel the Lord for you, for me, is God has called you for a purpose. Okay? You weren't just pulled into the life raft. You were pulled on to the battleship. Amen? <laughs> so, you know, the, here's a, a, you know, the difference between a cruise ship and a battleship. A cruise ship is most of the people are being served. And they're on for the journey. In a battleship, everybody has a job. And you're, you're, you're going into, you're, you have a purpose together. I have a purpose on the battleship, and together we have a purpose. That's this place right here. That's you guys. And may God multiply you and increase you and bless you. Becky? Becky? Hello. Yeah. Um, I was so blessed to see you guys moving in this and so open. And I just felt last night that God was doing something new. He was just just pumping you up in the Holy Spirit. A couple things the Lord said: Be courageous. Don't be afraid. Do what God's called you to do. Yes. Okay. Don't shrink back. Go forward. Um, I see a few scattering of older gray hairs. Well, mine's colored. Yeah. But 
<clears throat> you guys have a purpose here. Amen. God has placed you here for a purpose to um, let these younger folk learn. And go to these elders in the church and listen. Also get into the word, know God's word, because he's not going to do anything that is against the word of God. That's, that's your safety. It's going to line up to the scripture. And that's how you're going to know, that, is this a God thing? <clears throat> and be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit and you have your spiritual language, today is your day. Say, yes, Lord, I am here and I want the anointing of the Holy Spirit because you cannot do this, like Pastor Richard said, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't hear if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit clearly. Amen. I'll just say it like that. Amen? Amen. With that being said, so if any of you feel like you want to be, well, not feel, like if you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, they have prayed, they have said that they will pray for you, so come on down. Do not be shy. If there's something else that you need prayer for, but um, can I just tell you, I, uh, I, I'm so proud of y'all for being open and receptive, and, and there is a, they're, they're right, there's, you guys are special. There is something that, um, that God is doing here. And I believe that God is going to be uh, using many, many, many of you, all of you. Amen. And we need, as we go forth, we've got to hear the Lord clearly so that we can do his purposes for us. And so that we can commune with him. Because we've got to be filled up first because otherwise we have nothing to give. Amen. But thank you, Pastor Richard, Pastor Becky. They're awesome, right? Yeah. Yes, Amen. Does anybody have a question that they that did not get answered today that you're just as burning in your soul? Anybody? Anybody, anybody? That's brave? No? And then if anybody wants prayer, please come see. Um, we're happy to pray. And then, um, Pastor Richard, do you have anything else to? Oh, yes. He has written a book. So there's some books there in the back. So if you, there's some books, there's a... Um, Actually, here, can you talk about those? <laughs> they're, they're, in the, they're in that box back there. Here, Janie, you're back there. Can you point to the box? Yeah, just a little book now. And the, <laughs> the pastor's been, your leader's been inside looking for the rest of the book. So I'm, I'm just going to give you a gift of it. I shared with Pat. Uh, no, here. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I wrote a little book. It's called uh, The Book of Bold Actions, and it was about... Uh, Right, I, I wrote about the tendency we have to go to sleep in life, and I call it sleepwalking, and that's the condition where we kind of check out, and we're going through the motions, but we're just checked out, and uh, so that little book is about that, and uh, it's and it's it's an easy read, but it, it's uh, it's also one that you can work through and 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 process and. If you and so I just I hope you'll enjoy it. I don't know how many I have, but hopefully there's enough for everyone. And uh, God bless you. Thank you. All right, shall we pray? Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you are here with us. Lord, thank you for speaking to your people. Lord, thank you that you are a good shepherd, that you love us, Lord, that you speak to us. And Lord, I just pray that you would fill us with your boldness. Lord, that as you speak to us, Lord, that you would give us boldness to go out and to speak to others. That you give us boldness to speak. Lord, when you give us an encouraging word and you give us something to say to somebody, Lord, that we would say that. Lord, that you would give us discernment. Lord, that you would help us to discern whether it is our voice or your voice. And Lord, that you would just continue to speak and to use us. Lord, here are our hands. Can we just lift our hands, guys? Here we are, Lord, your servants. Use us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Empower us, Lord Jesus. Fill us with your love and your joy and your peace and your power. 
Lord, as we go about our daily lives, Lord, that we would hear you, even as we go about our just daily lives, as we go to the grocery store, as we go to work, as we go to school, whatever it is that we're doing, is even as we're doing laundry or, or dishes or whatever it is, Lord, that we would hear your voice clearly. And we thank you for it, and we thank you for all that you're doing, Jesus. In your holy name, amen. One more little note about the book. I'm just realizing that it also is a good tool to share with someone, whether they know the Lord or not, because I wrote it with that in mind that people might be reading it who aren't, quote, believers right now, and it would speak to them. Okay, so thank you so much, y'all, for being so receptive. Amen and amen. Make sure you greet them because they're awesome, right? Hug some necks. Greet people if you don't know them. There are snacks in the back, and we will be going to lunch. We're going to uh, Thai Monkey today. All right?